So how did uh, how did you guys find out about Chevy? Actually, someone at your office saw me and sent me a bunch of stuff. Cool. So, yeah, someone at the Chubby's brand. Yeah, I don't know who it is. I, I feel really? like a real jerk. Uh, it's been so long. They just sent me a bunch of stuff in the mail. So I put it on, took a picture, and yeah. tagged me and said thanks. The picture is awesome. Yeah. Um, so usually with, if I'm on the news, they make me say my name and then spell it. So that way you can put it at the bottom left hand of the screen or whatever. Okay. So it's like, hey, what's up? I'm SSG, parentheses, R-E-T, parentheses, Travis Mills, so T-R-A-V-I-S-M-I-L-L-S. And I happen to be a quadruple amputee, had a rough day at the office. So on April 10th of 2012, we got a phone call from one of the village elders in a little village outside of our strong point. And he said there was IEDs in the village, and we knew they were there, um, but we didn't know where exactly. So we went out like we always did, and the guy that was two people in front of me was sweeping the ground with a minesweeper. And he went over the trail not once but twice. Nothing alarmed, nothing said there was anything there. Um, so he told me it was all clear, so I walked up. I took my backpack off and I set it on the ground. And when I set it on the ground, underneath it was actually um, one of 13 bombs in a row. When the bomb went off, I took my right arm and my right leg automatically. So I hit the ground, I rolled over, I saw what happened. My medic, Dan Bateson, ran up to me. And I told him, I said, don't, you're not gonna save me. You know, don't worry about it. I've seen a lot of guys, unfortunately, die for a lot less. So I told Meg, don't worry about it. Um, he ignored that. And then within 10 minutes, he had a helicopter. And then uh, two days later, in Montreal, Germany, I woke up for the very first time on the April 14th. And it was my birthday, actually. And uh, my brother-in-law was in the room, and then I said, am I paralyzed? And he said, no. And I said, you don't gotta lie to me. I can't put my fingers and toes to tell me the truth. Am I paralyzed? And he said, you know, I'm not lying. You don't, you're not paralyzed, but you don't have them anymore. In my head, I was embarrassed. I was angry, I was upset, questioning my bad person. Um, you know, does God hate me? You know, what I do wrong, I'd like to have this happen. And, and uh, how am I gonna be a husband now and a father? I was, you know, my daughter was six months old at the time. And after three hours of all those questions and, you know, all the confusion and anger, Josh piped in, like, you gotta call your parents and your wife, you know, like, you have to. So I called my parents and my wife and I told my wife, I said, hey, what's up, I'm fine, love you, bye, that's it, I didn't wanna have a conversation. And then I called my parents and I about the same conversation, uh, talked a little bit more, broke down a little bit more sadness, but then my mom was like, hey, by the way, happy birthday. <laughs> and I was like, oh yeah, you're right. I arrived at Walter Reed April 17th, and when I got there, Kelsey rushed up to see me, and I was getting wheeled in, and they gave her a clipboard, and they said, Mrs. Mills, his right leg is ripped open, and my sutures on my right leg had split open, and they said, he's gonna bleed out. We have to cut two inches off his right leg and sew him back up or he'll die, and we need you to sign this paperwork. And then the next day, she came in the room, and I was talking with her, and I had four days now to really think about things, and I told her, you should take what we have and kind of go. And I was like, you should have the house, the cars, Whatever money and the savings I have is yours, and whatever I get financially, you know, I'll take care of you and Chloe the best I can, but this is not what I want for you or for our six-month-old little girl. And she looked at me and was like, that's not how this works. I'll be here, and uh, she was. And I saw my daughter for the first time, and I was wondering what she'd think about me. I went from 250 pounds and six foot three to like three foot six, 140 pounds. But uh, my daughter came in and she started to laugh and giggle and play. And I was like, how is this kid not afraid of me? You know, and then I realized that, well, with my fuzzy chest, my short arms and legs, I look like a teddy bear, so it's kind of fun. Not a lot of dads can say that they actually learn how to walk with their daughter, but I can actually say that me and my daughter learn how to walk together. So, um, so family, you know, is everything. And that's why this place exists, because without my family being there to support me, I would never be the person I am today doing things I'm doing. I also realized, and I, I tell every time I talk to a crowd, that you can't always control your situation. Um, every day I'm gonna wake up with no arms and legs, but fortunately I'm gonna wake up and my daughter's gonna be the one waking me up most of the time. And I'm gonna get in my wheelchair and I'm gonna go downstairs and we're gonna make breakfast and we're gonna get ready for school and my wife's gonna wake up and our son's gonna wake up with her and they're gonna come down probably 45 minutes after we wake up. And it's up to me to control my attitude. I've always, uh, been in trying to, you know, in the military, I always exude confidence. And I feel like if you're willing to go out there and show a little bit of thigh, that's, that means you have confidence. 
And I got these shorts in the mail, and I was like, these are pretty cool. And I figured people stare at me anyway. Like, they're not going to stop staring at me. When people see me, I don't want them to think like, oh, they can't talk to me because he's handicapped. Just like, hey, this guy looks pretty fun. I mean, look at, look at the bright shirt. He got the shorts on, he's ready for the beach, but he's approachable. And um, I don't know, I, I just I feel comfortable in, you know, with wearing this stuff out. And I feel comfortable with my own skin. And, and people seem to appreciate the fact that they can come up and say hi to me. They don't feel like they're not able to just come have a conversation like anybody else would. How about the story of uh, how you met your wife? I actually, how I got her was I said, you know, you make my heart go. <laughs> Sometimes I can convince people my heart beats out of my chest. I'm like, if I really think about it real hard, my, thin, my chest cavity got real thin, and I make my heart beat out of my chest. And I do that, and they're like, oh. <laughs> and like, I get this, every time I'm, like, when I'm speaking, like, I'll talk to somebody afterwards, and I'm like, can you believe that? And they're like, no, I had no idea. <laughs> I only do it for the ladies, though. You guys are, this is a rare treat for you. You know, I'm like, ding, 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 ding,